of this incredible celestial moment. These don't really happen very often. So it's a really unique experience to be able to witness this live from here in Kerrville, Texas. Just a few moments, we'll actually be able to have that view from right here. I can hear the crowd already kind of buzzing. People have all their glasses ready to go, already kind of looking up and observing that partial eclipse. You just saw the coverage in San Diego. This is really sweeping across such a big area of the United States, and it's gonna to continue to move closer and closer and closer to us. You can see already since I've just started this uh, conversation here, we've already moved away from Eugene, so they are no longer in annularity, and this is continuing to move into parts of Nevada. This will then continue to track further southeast to our friends out in Albuquerque at the Balloon Festival. They'll have a phenomenal view there, intermixed with the balloons and everything. It'll look awesome. And you're also seeing right now our live view of Kerrville, Texas. You can see we're already in pretty good coverage here with the partial eclipse. If I click on a Kerrville on our interactive map, you can see that we're expecting our peak coverage of, of the annularity to begin at 1150. And I'll remind you again, if you're using our interactive tool, these are all clickable too. So if you wanted to click onto those and see exactly what time and, and exactly what it's gonna look like actually, this is a prediction of what it's gonna look like in your neck of the woods. And so, Actually, the path you're seeing this moon taking is the exact path it's gonna look like the moon's taking in real life for you. So that little googly eye is showing that directionality. So for us, the moon has already entered in from kind of above the sun here. It's gonna continue tracking down, eventually giving us that incredible ring of fire effect. I can't wait to see this live. This will be the first time for me ever seeing an annularity alive. I'm super excited. So the hit is coming up again in Albuquerque, New Mexico. In just a little bit, they'll get a phenomenal view there. Keep tracking it. But for now, back to you, Tahira. Incredible, James. And I mean, I think earlier you said buzzing. Like, Gina, it yeah. feels like the town is coming alive. It is. It's starting to get a little colder here. I know. I'm kind of feeling so. I, I mean, mean, looking around, you can just see people are kind of lounging back with their safety eclipse glasses and just taking it all in and getting excited for this. And so, and not only will Kerrville see today's annular eclipse, they're also positioned to see the total solar eclipse so next lucky. year. Yeah. Right? Like, how? <laughs> Awesome is that? And so, folks, let's take a look at how the city has been preparing in the lead up to these special events. Kerrville is the eclipse capital of the state of Texas. It is known as being the capital of the Texas Hill Country. It's the epitome of Texas. Ranches, deer, beautiful streams like the Guadalupe Pier. Kerrville is very welcoming. It's a wonderful community. Tight knit small. It has about 25,000 people. Kerrville is blessed to be in that special square. Not only are we going to witness the annular eclipse in 2023, we're also going to witness the total solar eclipse in 2024. We're talking about crossroads, you know. We get it twice. Two. Two eclipses is coming right here, right where I stand. Well, it's statistically extraordinary. We get two in less than six months. And everybody's excited about it. City council, county commissioners, everybody's working diligently to be able to provide safe opportunity for the influx of people. This will be the biggest event in the history of the city. And that's why the city is preparing. We're preparing to make the event enjoyable for everybody who wants to see this tremendous natural phenomenon. I think that Kerrville has done an awesome job of preparing, you know, way in advance. It's getting that message out to people to make sure that they're taken care of personally, but then there's the science part of it. Letting them know what is an eclipse. And I'm just having a great time going out and talking to civic organizations and clubs and I can talk about eclipses. So this will be my fourth and fifth solar eclipses. I've seen total eclipse in Nebraska. I drove 1,200 miles for a little over two minutes and it was well worth it. And just couldn't believe the experience of the eclipse. I mean, it's still just, it literally gives me goosebumps every time I talk about it. It's a visceral, emotional experience that is just, you have to, you have to experience it to understand. I thought I knew what it would be like, but I gasped at the sheer wonder. It's gonna be a, <gasps> you're gonna hear that intake of air and the awe. It was the most beautiful natural thing I've ever seen. So to have an eclipse basically in my backyard is just, I, it's indescribable. As you can see, the town is alive, preparing for these spectacular moments. Now, Gina, the sun not only impacts us here on Earth, right? 
That's right, Tahira. So the sun impacts our entire solar system. And in fact, when we explore with NASA, that's something that we have to take into consideration. So I'm glad you said exploring because I actually just recently learned that the sun even impacts human exploration in the solar system, yeah. which I thought was really cool. So let's take a second and see how studying heliophysics is actually helping us prepare for sending humans to the moon and Mars under our Artemis program. NASA has studied the sun and its influence throughout our solar system for decades. The Artemis program will provide a better understanding of solar activity through two new missions. Hermes is an instrument package that will monitor space weather from the moon and be placed on NASA's gateway, an orbital outpost being built for lunar operations and eventually Mars exploration. The dual spacecraft escapade mission will examine the effects of solar wind on the red planet's atmosphere. Heliophysicists at NASA are working to protect astronauts who will travel to the moon and to Mars by increasing our understanding of the space environment through which they must travel. With safety ever at the forefront, the agency is using spacecraft observations and simulations to better understand space weather. That's a look at your Artemis Moon Minute. Folks, I've learned that it is almost time for annularity to make its move into Albuquerque, New Mexico. We've got Joy standing by at our other desk who is going to tell us about an upcoming NASA mission and show us live views from this solar eclipse. Joy, Michael, on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you right now? I think I'm about a 20 right now. What about you, Michael? Oh, I am so excited. You can see the light changing. It's getting a little bit chilly. Uh, I am so excited. I cannot wait. <laughs> yeah. So now we're joined with NASA scientist, Dr. Nikki Weil, who's going to tell us about a new sun mission. Firstly, Nikki, how are you feeling today? <laughs> It is so amazing to be here. I'm so excited to be able to be a part of this festival and witness the annual eclipse. So Nikki, what is the PUNCH mission and what does it stand for? So PUNCH is a NASA small explorer. It stands for Polarimeter to Unify the Corona and Heliosphere. So the corona is the outermost atmosphere of the sun. It's the part of the sun that you get to see during a total solar eclipse when the moon totally blocks out the main body of the sun. And then the heliosphere is the bubble carved out by the sun as that corona turns into a solar wind and fills our solar system. So I know that PUNCH has a big outreach effort as well, especially looking at humanity's interaction with the sun and observing the sun. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, humanity has been studying the sun and the moon and those different cycles for millennia. And one place where there's a lot of evidence of that um, uh, studying of the sun is over in Chaco Canyon here in New Mexico. And actually our PUNCH outreach team, some of our PUNCH outreach team is over there in Chaco right now where there's just so much evidence of ancient and modern sun watching. The ancient sun watching there evidence is um, the, on the rock of the sun, there's this petroglyph of the what we think might be the 1097 total solar eclipse oh, wow. that actually went right over Chaco Canyon on a path similar to the annular eclipse today. That's and amazing. then of course, the modern sun watching is what we're all doing here today. And of course, our Native American partners on the punch outreach effort that still honor some of their traditional sun watching efforts. And then of course, our NASA missions like punch and Parker Solar Probe. That's amazing. And you mentioned punch shows and studies the um, sun's atmosphere, the corona. Why do we need to study the sun's atmosphere? The corona is amazing because it is hundreds of times hotter than the photosphere below it, the surface of the sun, the part that we should never look directly at. Um, so that's amazing. That's like if you walked away from a fireplace and it got hundreds of times hotter. Now, we know it has to do with the magnetic fields rooted down in the sun, but we don't know exactly how that energy gets into the corona. So that's one of the things we're really interested in studying. Right, so we're looking at a live shot on camera of this uh, eclipse. We're getting really close to annularity. So what are you looking forward to as a scientist when you think about eclipses and, and especially um, with the new mission coming up? Punch is gonna be so amazing because it's going to take images of the corona and that uh, plasma as it fills the solar system. 
in regular white light like we could see it with our eye if our eye were sensitive enough and if the moon always blocked out the main body of the sun but it doesn't and that's why we need nasa missions like punch to do that for us fantastic i can't wait for the mission to launch <laughs> yeah, me neither i'm super excited about it so we're like very we're moments away, minutes away from the annular eclipse here. I'm um, Nikki. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoy the annular eclipse. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. This has been great. And I hope you keep safe from the wind. The wind has kind of picked up right now. So, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so the, the skies are clear. The wind has picked up, but we have a clear view of the annular eclipse. So remember, the annular eclipse is moments away from Albuquerque and the sun is never completely covered. So during the eclipse, you have to keep your eclipse glasses on the entire time. You can also use other indirect viewing methods too, like a pinhole projector if you don't have eclipse glasses. So Michael, do you have your glasses ready? I have mine ready. Great. So now let's go to a full screen view of the telescope here in Albuquerque. Wow. Wow. We are minutes away and you can see that the ring of fire is almost here. Yeah, the the sun is just egressing um, over into the moon, or the uh, the moon's egressing onto the sun. We're getting closer and closer. The light here on the ground is visibly different. And looking up at the sky, where we see a thumbnail moon, it is our thumbnail sun. It is it is gorgeous. Wow. The, the, the ring of fire, the almost ring of fire, it yeah. looks so sharp and clear with our beautiful skies today. Yeah, it really is almost that Johnny Cash moment. We're, we're getting close to the Ring of Fire. Um, it, it is really beautiful to see happening in real time as well. This is one of those events where you, I can sit and watch and see how the moon is progressing and see that changing. I can't believe that the moon, we can actually see the moon moving in front of the sun right now. You can, yeah. fit, you can literally see it. It's just incredible. So as we approach annularity, you might be able to see Bailey's beads. Um, these are bright points of light of the sunlight coming through the valleys on the moon itself um, right before, the, uh, right before the, the annularity begins. You can even hear the crowds in the background. You can just feel the atmosphere building up. Yeah, it, it is palpable. Um, everybody is super excited here. I, I, I know I am just thrilled. We are just in the final countdown. You can hear some people starting to cheer and starting to get uh, all pumped up themselves. Wow, the ring of fire is almost here. I'm just gonna take my glasses off briefly and you can see the crowd, everyone is just staring safely at the sun right now. It's just amazing that we're all united looking at this amazing celestial event. And make sure you take a look at the shadows around you. You're going to see these crescent shadows everywhere as um, different uh, objects create natural pinhole projectors. And so uh, make sure that you, you do have a moment to uh, take a look at the world around you because there's a beautiful uh, rings. So let's take a minute and just be quiet and enjoy the view. Gorgeous sight to behold. Everyone is cheering. This is so amazing. <gasps> wow. Yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> you can hear people it, it, screaming in the background. <laughs> <laughs> people are so excited. And take off your eclipse glasses uh, safely, of course, and make sure you look at the shadows around you, look at how the um, environment has changed, uh, just make note of this entire event. Wow, this is so amazing. This really puts our planet in perspective with the whole solar system, you know? It's truly spectacular. It's one of those natural phenomenon that I just feel so lucky to be here at this place at this time to be able to observe it. Wow, I'm just looking at a, a tiny pinhole below and I see a little ring, like a little spotlight. This yeah. is so cool. You can see ringlets uh, dotting everywhere around here. 
Michael. see people taking pictures of the ground. <laughs> How are you feeling, Michael? Oh, this is spectacular. You know, we've been preparing for this event for so long to actually be in this moment and to be uh, experiencing it live uh, is is just a tremendous. Joy, how are you feeling? I, I'm just in awe, you know, this, I can feel the temperature drop and this ring of fire is actually feels so long. Yeah. It's just about four minutes long and it feels just incredible that we are seeing moon right in front of the sun right now. So that moon's shadow is traversing across the ground at a few thousand or a few thousand miles an hour, almost Mach 3. So even though it, it seems like it's lingering, it's actually making really good progress and pretty soon our, our colleagues in Kerrville will be seeing the annularity too. Wow, and the crowds, everyone is still staring, looking at the annular eclipse. I love that everyone is here together, enjoying this together. Wow. Yeah, you can almost hear a little bit of an awe and reverence among the crowd. And like initially, there was a bit of cheering, and then everything got a little bit quieter as people took in the site. I, I think that, you know, as people experience this event, it, it strikes both, uh, you know, personal but also communal, and it's, it's a really beautiful, beautiful event to see. I would say we have about thousands of people in the Fiesta today and hundreds on the museum grounds. Everyone is just excited about this eclipse and it's just so lovely to see. And I think also what I really love to do is to look at the crowd and see everybody mm -hmm. looking up at the sky with their glasses on in the same place. It's just, <laughs> it's fun to do a little bit of people watching as well. <laughs> yes. Wow, this is a perfect ring of fire. It's just so crisp. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. I'm so excited for the science that is going to be coming out of this too. Of course, that I'll, I always come to back to the science and the this um, opportunity to have the moon covered to this extent is going to provide us really amazing data about how the sun and moon and Earth are interact, how they interact with each other. Oh my goodness. We have about 30 seconds left of annularity here. I just want to absorb this moment. It's so fast and so slow. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a sight. Sometimes you just have to take a moment to take it in. Yes. Oh my goodness. Well, we have a few more seconds left of annularity in Albuquerque. Yeah, we're closing down on the last little bit. Take a see if you can see a Bailey's bead possibly popping up right as that edge of the moon in, uh, it aligns with the edge of the sun. Just seconds left. Really such a gorgeous sight. It really is. Oh, that is going to be a moment to remember. <gasps> Absolutely. So Kerbal is going to be experiencing this very, very soon. Yeah. So let's head back to them in Kerbal, Texas to see what they're up to. Oh, I mean, Joy and Michael, like I got goosebumps watching you that experience incredible. annularity and you know like that is about to be us soon it's true i mean so tahira we're about 550 miles away from them and we will have annularity in about 10 minutes because as michael said the moon's shadow is traveling more so than a thousand miles an hour <laughs> everyone's so excited yeah, as you can see the crowd is just getting excited for today's opportunity and folks it's starting to get dimmer here like it, it is. is gonna be amazing yeah so gina other than sheer beauty, why do we observe eclipses at NASA? Well, NASA can learn a ton of different science from the eclipses. So let's talk about exoplanets for a second, because when we study exoplanets, we are actually using eclipses. The planet itself is passing in front of its host star, and so we can learn about the exoplanets. There are eclipses on other planets in our solar system that we can study, but here on Earth, the science that we're able to do will inform us about the upper atmosphere and how it responds to the sun. So really understanding kind of that sun-earth connection. We can do lunar science as well, and of course, 
solar science, learning more about the sun. So eclipses are touching, earth science, planetary science, sun science, everything. It's incredible. Across and NASA's spectrum. studying it all. Yes, exactly. We take wow. advantage of that, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, spectacular sight, spectacular science. Yeah. So, folks, we have James standing by at our uh, eclipse desk with a telescope operator who's going to show us the next city experiencing annularity. James, how are things looking? Yeah, hey Tahir, I just had a quick look outside. It is really surreal here. It's kind of hard to process exactly what we're seeing because it, it's daytime, but it feels like it's not. It's starting to get already very close to annularity. You can hear a lot of screams behind me now. Right now, we're actually getting the annularity in Roswell, New Mexico. They should have a phenomenal view outside right now. And I'm actually joined by a telescope operator who's been providing a phenomenal view for us all morning with her telescope. This is Kat Trosh. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. This is so exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's really mind-blowing seeing it. And so you have quite the setup. Could you walk us through exactly what you have outside for us? Sure. I have a Celestron 6SE. It's a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope with a solar filter on the front and a DSLR camera that's streaming to YouTube. And so a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope is a bit of a unique telescope. Usually you think of kind of like a long cylindrical thing, but this concentrates the image in a different way, right? Right. So it's a little bit more compact. It's definitely designed for astrophotography in mind. And how it works is there there is a glass corrector plate in the front, it's clear glass, and the light from anything that you're looking at, whether it's planets or in this case today the sun, will travel through the corrector plate to the primary mirror that's at the back of the telescope, then that will bounce back into the secondary mirror that is attached to the corrector plate on the front, and then it'll go through, again, back at the, uh, into the diagonal that's attached to the DSLR camera or an eyepiece if you're looking at it. So a pretty complex process, and also you have to have special protection for the telescope itself because you're used to looking at pretty dim objects. What do you have set up for that? So I have a white light solar filter, and it is incredible incredibly important, just like protecting your eyes, you need to have solar equipment for your telescope or your camera if you're photographing the sun. Yeah, and so also, this is obviously moving really quickly across our sky. You just heard from Michael that this is really quite a quick event here. So how do you keep it in the field of view of the camera? Well, thankfully, the remote control that's part of the telescope actually has a city database set up, so I can program it for city and state, and Kerrville was actually listed. Look at that. Very <laughs> awesome. And yes, yeah, so you can see it's already moving very quickly towards us. This is where annular is going to be currently taking place. You can see we're next in line here, coming up in just a little bit. So very excited to continue tracking this across our skies. Thank you so much for providing this awesome Thank view you. for us all morning. You can really see it's it's really getting close now. It's got this beautiful crescent to it. Usually we're used to a crescent moon. We've got a crescent sun today. I mm -hmm. mean, really awesome. And in just a few moments, we're going to have the ring of fire of annularity. Very excited to have that. Thank you so much for joining us, Kat. Thank you. And back to you, Tahira. Thanks, James and Kat. Now, we have about six-ish minutes, 6.30, until annularity makes its way here to Kerrville, Texas. As you can hear, the <laughs> anticipation is high. They're so excited. And so, Gina, as we count down to the big moment, let's take a few social questions. Let's do it. Okay. So we have something to see here on X who asks, am I seeing a couple of sunspots on the telescope feed? Yes, so you are seeing some sunspots. As I look at the live feed, maybe not so much right now because the moon is blocking most of the sun, but when the moon wasn't covering as much of the sun, you could see some darker spots and black spots here and there. And those, in fact, are sunspots, which are areas of really intense magnetic fields. And the surface of the sun is actually cooler, which is why they appear darker than the rest of the bright sun that we see. Now, we heard a little bit about space weather and some of that solar activity that's coming towards Earth during, you know, some of the, the sun's activity. And basically, these sunspots are where that activity can come from. And right now, the sun is in the part of its solar cycle where more of those sunspots start to appear. So the sun goes through an 11 year right cycle. Yeah, Which where it's okay. where it becomes active and then where it becomes less active. And right now we're inching towards what we call that solar maximum. And so more and more of those sunspots appear and that's what we're seeing today. That is incredible. And I mean, <laughs> again, talk about activity. 
Gina, this crowd yeah. right now, like folks, if you could see it, I don't know if you exactly. We, yeah. There okay. You go. We have folks looking up already with the eclipse glasses on. You see the live telescope feed in your uh, in, on the screen right now. We are moments away. What I think is super cool. We've even got some folks out here with their own telescopes uh, and cameras to really capture this spectacular event. Yeah. And so again, it looks like we've got about four minutes. The crowd is growing, and I'm I'm interested to see how everything kind of calms down too. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see. Gina, I have another question. Uh, this is from Baron on YouTube okay. who asks, "Does a solar eclipse have a material impact on the atmosphere?" Oh, I love this question because with the eclipse, we really are trying to understand the Sun-Earth connection, and so you can almost think of the eclipse as a, a controlled experiment. Basically, the fact that we often, you know, experience changes in our atmosphere during the nighttime, but the eclipse is almost able to turn off and on the sun. So real like I mean even right now night. we were blasted yeah. with the right. sun earlier and now, and now it's, it's just chilly. like it's darker. Yeah. Like. And so it's the upper atmosphere that we're really interested in understanding. And the energy and the radiation from the sun creates what we call the ionosphere, this upper part of the atmosphere that's filled with charged particles. And so when the sun's radiation is not hitting the atmosphere, that ionosphere it changes in, in its density, its temperature and we're really trying to understand those changes and the eclipse gives us that opportunity to really turn the sun on and off which we can't do it's like in a little experiment that yeah. <laughs> honestly all of us also get to be a part of right? so that's really cool it is thanks Gina so our next question is from Hunter on YouTube who asks does the solar eclipse affect the moon when it happens at night okay great question Hunter so Today, as we're experiencing a solar eclipse, that means that the moon is between the sun and the earth. Now, the, the lunar eclipse, lunar eclipse that can take place, is when the moon is actually on the other side of the earth. And so today we're experiencing that solar eclipse, and we see that the moon is very dark. Um, is that, and it looks oh, like, too, we're getting a live feed. Looking at that feed. Another annularity taking oh, place right great. now. Odessa, Texas. Wow. Awesome. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's cool to oh. see this comparison right now. What is what that? Is What's that? on the side it of the screen? Like we, we might have some solar activity. Is that on. is that a Bailey's bead? Yeah. yeah. Or solar yeah. activity? Wow. Wow. Incredible. That's incredible. It is leaving Odessa right now and heading it's coming our way. Us, you Gina. Can see oh my it goodness. In the other live feed that we just have that teeny tiny sliver of the sun left peeking out. Wow. We've got about two minutes here, folks. As you can hear, the crowd is chanting and counting wow. down until our moment right now. Oh, that is beautiful. It's coming in so quickly too. And you can and I'm gonna grab those glasses it. so that I have them. Okay, wow. So before we hit our moment and peak in annularity, folks, it's a good time to give a reminder that it is never safe to look directly at the eclipse without proper eye protection when watching even a partial or annular solar eclipse directly with your eyes. <laughs> you must look through safe solar viewing glasses or a handheld viewer at all times. Do not look at the sun through a camera lens, telescope, binoculars, or any other optical device while wearing eclipse glasses. Wait one more minute, folks. <laughs> if you don't have eclipse glasses, you can use an indirect viewing method like a pinhole projector, which has a small opening and will project the image of the sun onto a nearby surface. You just heard it. We are under a minute away from the annular eclipse making its way across our area into Kerrville, Texas. It feels like it's gotten here so quickly. We've been counting down. I know. And now we're less than it a is minute. beautiful. Yeah. And so, again, you're witnessing firsthand the moon passing between our star and the Earth. And we're taking this full screen right now. Gina, let's take this opportunity and get a closer look. All right. Gosh, and looking around, I mean, everything time. is so dim. Oh. oh, wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow, you know, like, why am I emotional right now? Oh, this there is... we go. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. This 
she's. I mean, it doesn't oh, look wow. real. I didn't think I would cry. <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? Wow. This is. Wow. I hope it looks great. I mean, you can just see. It, it looks like a perfect so circle of the sun peeking ring. out. It really is that ring of fire that we have here. Wow. Gina, I thought I'd have goosebumps, but I'm like literally shaking. <laughs> this is crazy. I know. I know. I agree. So, I mean, this and is I'm your just, first annular eclipse. I mean, was it what you expected? It is to hear. I mean, we've seen all of the photos from previous annular eclipses, but just as I look again, I mean, it's, it's incredible how the moon and the sun are able to line up like this. And again, I mean... The, the moon is way smaller than the sun, but right now it's really giving it, given it a run for its money. It is. Yeah. Why is that? Well, so a little fun fact about our moon, it's pretty incredible. It's 400 times smaller than the sun, but it's also 400 times closer to the Earth. No, and that 400, 400, and 400 is a magic number here, yeah? <laughs> wow. The fact that that 400 and 400, that means in the sky, the moon and the sun appear to be the same size. And that is unique to us on Earth. No other planet in our solar system has that ratio that makes it so special. So you're saying that if we viewed an eclipse on another planet, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look like this? It wouldn't. I mean, I, I'm sure it would be great to see, but it would not look as spectacular as this. Wow, okay, I'm gonna turn behind me really fast. Yeah, looking around. And you can just see everything. The shadows are a little bit different. It's dim. You, you get this hazy feeling, but the sky is still blue. That's what's strange about it. Oh, it's so sweet. We've got parents like holding little eclipse glasses <laughs> on their kids to look up. This is just, it's really amazing how just like, I don't know, a natural phenomenon can yeah. really make the world pause for a second. It's great. Right? Wow. You heard the cheering and, and now it's know, quiet now again it's as quiet. people are just looking. And so, for us, this is going to last about four minutes until it crosses, right? That's right. And why, why is that? Is that the same in every city or... Yeah, so there's actually... The, the length of the maximum eclipse can change based on several factors. I mean, each eclipse is unique. And so, one thing has to do with where in the moon's orbit the moon is because the moon's orbit isn't circular. So it will go faster and slower at different parts. And that will make the shadow travel at different speeds. Also, where the shadow is landing on Earth will have an impact because if you're at the equator, you're going to be rotating much faster than if you were at the poles. And so for that fact, it changes the length of that maximum eclipse too. And that's true not just for annular eclipses, but for the partial eclipses, for, for the totality, uh, for total solar eclipses as well. And I imagine, you know, our folks at home getting some of those partial eclipses are also having a great experience too. Wow. I don't know what I expected, but it wasn't this. Like, this is incredible. And so, Gina, I'm sure, I mean, you're in heliophysics, sun science. I'm sure some of your teams are studying today's eclipse. Like, oh, yeah. What? Absolutely. So, I what mean, kind we, of science can only happen right now, you know? Right. We've heard about the, the sounding rockets that are experimenting. Oh, you that's know, right. Today, we saw one, yeah. Studying the upper atmosphere. And so we're really interested in knowing, like, right now in our location, as that radiation from the sun's being blocked, how does the upper atmosphere change? And so. In addition to that, I mean, we really want to understand um, how those sunspots, what, what's going on when they're covered versus when they are not covered. We can ch tell the difference in that radiation that's coming from the sun. And so there's so much science that we can do. Uh, and this is just, folks, this is, view is just so incredible. Before we fully pass through this uh, transit, let's check in with James at our Eclipse desk. James, I know you are seeing this. What do you think? It's oh. truly a surreal moment. It, it feels like almost that nighttime. Was so it's been really breezy, chilly. That was so the shadows awesome, yeah. are all like little rings as well. It's just a beautiful sight. Kind of hard to put into words the exact feeling. I mean, we've been preparing for this for a while. We've you know been tracking this all morning with our Eclipse Explorer, but actually to see it in person and to take it in, it's 
it's a really incredible moment. And this only lasted about four minutes. You can see on our Eclipse Explorer, this is already passing off of Kerrville, heading further southeast to parts of the, the Texas coast on the Gulf. And the morning is far from over here. For a lot of folks in Central America and South America, their morning is just starting off here. The partial eclipse is affecting still a large part of the region. You can see this whole area that's highlighted here in the larger uh, ellipse here. That's all being uh, affected still by that partial eclipse. And you can see on our track that this is going to continue moving, moving further southeast all the way into parts of South America before the morning's over. It's been just incredible tracking this. And actually, Kerrville, we're in the past of the total solar eclipse for next year. So if I turn on the path for next year, you can see X marks the spot here in Kerrville. We're gonna be coming right back here to witness this incredible cosmic event once again, getting that incredible view. Just really, again, very hard to put into words just how amazing this is. Uh, just, just a stunning experience, and it's been an honor to be here with you this morning, tracking this event as it's moved across. We started the morning in Eugene, Oregon. Now it has arrived and already passed us in Kerrville. I'll continue to track it for a little bit longer here, but for now, back to you, Tahira. Thank you, James. And folks, this is just the beginning. Today's event kickstarts NASA's Heliophysics Big Year, which is a year where we are encouraging people to do as many sun-related activities as possible in the lead up to next year's total solar eclipse. Now, Joy and Michael in Albuquerque are gonna share some of the ways you can play a part. Joy, what can we look forward to? Now that the annual eclipse is here, the fun has just begun. So today is the official launch of NASA's Heliophysics Big Year. This is a year-long celebration of solar science, and it's modeled after the Big Year concept from citizen scientists in the bird watching community. So they're challenged to see as many birds as they can, but in the Heliophysics Big Year, we're challenging you to do as many sun science-related activities as possible. And so one way to participate is through NASA's citizen science projects. Here are a few sun-related ones you could join. Did you know that you can participate in solar eclipse science with NASA? NASA's citizen science projects are collaborations between scientists and members of the public, no matter your citizenship. Several volunteer science projects are gearing up for the 2024 total solar eclipse that you can join. Total solar eclipses don't just look cool, they provide a rare chance to see the sun's faint outer atmosphere. Using telescopes and cameras that are safe for viewing the sun, volunteer scientists across North America will capture images of the total solar eclipse. Scientists will study these images in detail, tracking how plumes of solar material move through the sun's atmosphere. But be careful, without proper tools and techniques, you can damage your eyes and your camera. Did you know you can listen to an eclipse too? Amateur or ham radio operators will send radio messages to one another during the eclipse to see how changes in the upper atmosphere distort radio signals. As the moon blocks one portion of the sun, it can make other portions easier to see. Working with local scientists at an observatory in Southern California, participants will observe magnetic hotspots on the sun as the moon passes over them, revealing details they normally can't detect. Want to learn more? Follow Do NASA Science on X and Facebook to see how you can get involved in NASA Citizen Science. So as you can see in the telescope view, uh, the, the moon is now moving away from the sun, which is really, really amazing that we're still seeing this partial eclipse. Absolutely, and I think I can see a sunspot in there too. Um, and I think on one of the earlier shots, I could see a prominence. So we're seeing NASA sun science happening in real time. So we're getting some amazing questions online. Shall we ask some more? Yeah, let's get Answer into it. Answer some more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a question from Peter Chang on X, and they ask, can a filtered telescope see flares on the sun during totality? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, it depends on what filter though. So if you use just a white light filter, then you have to have an exceptionally large flare in order to be able to see it. If you use a, a filter like an H-alpha filter that specifically selects one uh, color of red light, then you're going to be able to see flares a little bit more um, frequently, even um, uh, e e even during totality as the uh, as the uh, corona adjusts to that flare as it erupts. Okay, so we have time for one more question. Um, Yeri on X asks, if a solar system had more than one star, would they have more solar eclipses? Would they all look like the same eclipses that, that we have here on Earth? 
Ooh, that is a getting a little sci-fi, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so if we had more than one sun, you'd have to have a moon to block both suns, or maybe two moons to block both suns. So you'd have to have a very complex geometry to get everything lined up perfectly so you could get solar eclipses with two suns and two moons, and oh, it would get very complicated. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michael. You're welcome. Okay, so um, now we're joined with NASA's heliophysics lead, Denise Hill, who's going to tell us more about how you can participate in the heliophysics big year. Hi, Denise. How are you today? <laughs> Great. Did you see that? That was my first annual eclipse, and we got a prominence. I am so stoked. That was the dopest thing ever. Okay. Okay. Heliophysics big year. So... As you've heard before, the sun touches everything. And the Heliophysics Big Year is a celebration, a global celebration of sun and sun, sun science and what we have going on. But it's also, I think I heard you say it, Michael, it's about the community and being communal and just the unity of hearing everybody cheer. The sun touches us all in so many different ways. And so the Heliophysics Big Year is going to help us kind of discover all the ways the sun touches us scientifically, but in other ways as well. And why is it a big year for the sun? So, you saw what just happened, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nothing. <laughs> Coming up in April 8th, we have the total solar eclipse, um, and then... Uh, Parker Solar Probe's closest approach, which will end out the heliophysics big year, but it's the mission that has literally touched the sun, and it's going to be making its closest approach. And then from there, every single month during the heliophysics big year, and it's a big year because it's more than 12 months, <laughs> but during that, during that time, we have themes for... Um, on different ways people can explore the sun and how it touches them. So we have themes like fashion. We're gonna be delving into physical and mental and emotional health. The sun touches us in so many ways besides, and then we have missions. In just a couple weeks, we have our AWE mission that is launching and it's going to be the first space weather station on ISS and we are so excited, you have no idea. <laughs> Wow, there's so many new uh, NASA events and, and uh, opportunities coming up. Is there any other like science events that maybe people could get involved with themselves? Yeah, for sure. So we've talked about citizen science a bunch, yeah. and that is one of the ways for sure for people to get involved and to do NASA science with real um, scientists. And then there's also, like, you are a scientist. Every yeah. single one of us is a scientist. And we're going to share ways that you can explore the sun, do your own little scientific investigations, yourself and so yeah the science is going to be front and center there's also going to be some other things as well that's great so what are you most excited about in this upcoming big year for me it's the unity yeah. right like the sun touch it doesn't matter what race you are what ethnicity what culture religion whether you live in a rural community urban community it doesn't matter the sun touches us all and we like to call it our extraordinarily ordinary sun because the star our sun is supposed to just be ordinary but it is responsible and touches every living thing on earth and no other star that we know of has that level of responsibility. So that gives that gives me hope that you can be ordinary and have an extraordinary impact. That's amazing. <laughs> well, I think our sun's pretty extraordinary by itself, so I, I don't agree. know. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Denise. Thanks for Thanks having Denise. me. So if you want to learn more about the Heliophysics Big Year, you can visit go.nasa.gov slash heliobigyear. Michael, are you excited for the Heliophysics Big Year? I am so excited because I get to be a rock star for an entire year, and then I go back to being a normal scientist again. Well, no, it's, it's going to be fantastic for um, science, for outreach, for everything. I am so excited for this. Well, the Heliophysics Big Year has so many opportunities for folks around the world to get involved with NASA science, especially during the 2024 total solar eclipse and one group of citizen scientists will be using their sensors to make observations they'll gather sound recordings and help with data analysis to understand how wildlife in, will be impacted by solar eclipses and you can help them too no matter your citizenship so now let's learn more during a total solar eclipse it is almost like day becomes night very quickly so knowing that there's going to be a change in that light and life-giving energy means that we can predict when animals are going to have a rapid shift in their behavior. Which results in changes in the acoustic environment or the soundscape. 
So the Eclipse Soundscapes Project is a project to determine how eclipses affect life here on Earth. And there's a lot more to observation than just what you see. It's also important to think about what you hear. We're measuring how the rapid onset of darkness during an eclipse affects wildlife by measuring the changes in sounds that they make. The general public is best suited for this type of project because the general public is everywhere. And that's really the power of the participatory science component of this project. It enables recordings and observations of soundscapes across the diversity of ecosystems covered by the path of totality. We might think of some ecosystems having a greater influence of human activities on the soundscape, whereas in other ecosystems, say a remote part of a national park, we might have a lower influence of human activities and greater influence from the sounds of life and earth. The only way to properly preserve a species is to understand it. The only way to understand it is through scientific study on their behavior, their patterns, and their habitat requirements. One of the things we'll be doing during the total solar eclipse is setting up these recording stations. So these are our acoustic monitoring stations. And what we're doing is listening for calls of the different bat species with the hopes of maybe picking up some of those endangered species like the northern long-eared bat. We're hoping the results of this study will inform us about the health of our bat populations on Hot Springs National Park and help improve future conservation efforts. The Eclipse Soundscapes Project is an inclusive and accessible project that is inviting the general public to get involved in NASA science alongside scientists and subject matter experts. Wherever you take your observations, you might be giving us information that has never been recorded before. And that is really useful and interesting to a scientist. Wow, that sounds like an exciting project that anyone can get involved with. So if you want to learn more about Eclipse Soundscapes or any of other um, NASA's other citizen science opportunities, go to go.nasa.gov slash heliobigyear. Well, thank you to everyone joining us online and here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's been an unforgettable day, hasn't it, Michael? Oh, it certainly has. I will never forget this day. It has been uh, just a day full of activity and memories that will last a lifetime. So although the annual eclipse is over in Albuquerque, we still have one more day left at the Balloon Fiesta and one year to participate in as many sun signs related activities as possible in the Heliophysics Big Year. So now let's head back to Kerrville, Texas, where Tahira and Gina will chat about the upcoming total solar eclipse. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Thanks, everyone. And thank you, Joy and Michael. I mean, it sounds like we have so much to look forward to over this next year. And folks, even though peak annularity just passed in Kerrville, Texas, we are still getting an incredible view on this live telescope feed. You can see the moon is now passing over the sun and honestly on its way to make another city's day. Now, it is a good point to remind folks that X marks the spot here in Kerrville, Texas. For the 2024 total solar eclipse will pass in just six months. This very lucky city is in the path of totality and will be one of the places to witness the moon completely blocking out the face of the sun and darkening the sky as if it were dawn or dusk. Now, Gina and I are here with NASA chief scientist, Dr. Kate Calvin, to learn more about what we can expect for next year. Kate, thank you so much for being here with us. Thanks for having me. Have you. And so, Kate, can you start off and just give us an idea of what science we can expect only for a total solar eclipse? So one of the things that scientists are really interested in studying is called the corona. It's a part of the sun's atmosphere. It's the source of heat and particles that come towards Earth. But normally it's too bright, um, and so you can't really observe it directly. Scientists use instruments called chronographs to block some of that light, but it's still hard to see parts of the, the corona. It's not the same as a total eclipse? Yeah, the total eclipse gives no. the best environment for studying the corona. Right, but we were so lucky to just see that prominence coming off of the sun. And what is the prominence? And so that's actually some of that solar particle, some of the, the particles coming off of the sun, the ejecta, and we can kind of see it hanging there, which either turns into an eruption, some of that, that activity that we can observe, or it can kind of just quiet down as well. 
Yeah. So, Kate, can you tell us, you know, how do the how can the public get involved with the total solar eclipse? Oh, that's a good up? question. Yeah. So we have a number of citizen science projects. These are projects where people anywhere around the world can help contribute to our science. You don't have to be in the path of totality to contribute. We have projects for everyone, um, and there are th different projects. You, some of them you need ca uh, cameras or telescopes or equipment. Others you can use just with your cell phone. Um, and that's so we easy. have uh, one um, project that's um, called on the Globe Observer app. It's help understand the effect of eclipse on Earth's weather, and you can do that just with your phone. Um, do you need other a science background, or...? Anyone can contribute. We walk okay. through what you need to do, and sometimes it's as simple as taking a picture or recording a sound, um, and so you can oh, all great. contribute to our science. So anybody can get involved. Anyone can get involved. Perfect. And then, can you tell us a little more how the eclipse science that we're doing will help to inform kind of the broader science at NASA? Yeah, and so like I said, we're trying to study the corona, the source of heat and particles towards Earth. They affect Earth. They can uh, disrupt electricity. Electronics. They can lead to northern lights. So really interested in that in Earth um, and understanding yeah. the effects on Earth. But there's also uh, the sun affects other planets and um, bodies in the solar system, like the moon and Mars. And right. so when we think about exploring the solar system, we want to understand the sun and its role in it. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, yeah. we have so much to look forward to next year. I want to know real quick, what are like what's your peak excitement for next year's total solar eclipse? You know, we'll start with you and then Kate would love to hear your thoughts. Sure. So I'm really excited to compare what we saw today, that, that annular eclipse. How does it compare to that total solar eclipse? You know, I got to see a total in 2017, but every eclipse is unique and so such a scientist having I know want to do a little my experiment, experiment. <laughs> how many data points can I get um, but not just that you know we're hearing everything about the heliophysics big year and so it kicks off today and that total solar eclipse in April will be the next event so how many events can I participate in for the heliophysics big year amazing what about you Kate interested in sort of the things beyond just what you see, but what you feel, so that it's going to get cooler, and we might hear some Even animals. Today, we felt that. Yeah, and, and I really so. want the full body experience of the eclipse. That is incredible. And I mean, today has been a spectacular day. So folks, let's check in one last time with James at our eclipse desk to see how he's doing. James, what's it like? Yeah, to hear it. I'm still in awe of the moment that we just had here a couple minutes ago here in Kerrville, Texas. Just a stunning view of that ring of fire here. And as you can see on our Eclipse Explorer, the annularity has now shifted off into the Gulf of Mexico. So if you're in a boat out there, you'll have a phenomenal view. But we're going to be here once again next year, April 8th, 2024, in Kerrville, Texas. I've got the path of the 2024 total solar eclipse up here on the screen. You can see it's tracking right through us in Kerrville and then affecting an entirely new area here that is going to be stretching all the way up to parts of the New England, all the way up to Maine, even parts of Canada. So a really large area there as well. So definitely save those pinhole projectors and certainly keep a hold of those eclipse glasses. You're going to need them for next year. We're going to be right back to cover all of that incredible stuff. Stuff next year with you. It's been amazing tracking this today and again this is still moving onwards to Central America and South America so if you're tuning in from there you have a great view incoming and in many parts of the country there's still that partial eclipse. A truly awe-inspiring morning and a wonderful day for all. So thank you so much. Back to you Tahira. And thank you so much James for bringing us into the action during today's show. Gina, so wow. I mean this was both of our first experiences so final yeah. thoughts i mean what a day um at this point you know i'm ready to look at those calculations for the eclipses and check out not only april but what else can i see in the future because th these are spectacular to a little see. eclipse chaser exactly now, i'll you know? chase them around the world <laughs> no and it has been so fantastic having you on today's show to Thank really you. just like help break down what we are experiencing today and so again thank you so much for everything thank you for having me and folks the action isn't over yet you can continue to watch views of today's annular eclipse as it moves across the path by visiting go.nasa.gov forward slash eclipse 2023 live that live stream will be con will continue running until 4 30 p.m eastern as this eclipse continues its way through central and south america now unlike today's ring of fire effect we are going to witness the moon completely block out the face of the sun during next year's total solar eclipse the sky is going to darken as if it were dawn or dusk you can learn more about eclipses and what's in store for April 8th, 2024 by visiting go.nasa.gov forward slash eclipses. 
The total solar eclipse is sure to be a rare event and one you will not want to miss. So stay up to date with sun-related events and how we are studying our star by following NASA's sun on social media. Folks, thank you to everyone who has tuned in to today's coverage of the 2023 annular solar eclipse. We hope to see you back here next April as we ring in the last total solar eclipse that will pass through the mainland U.S. for two decades. Now, here's how you can celebrate the countdown to April 8th by joining our Heliophysics Big Year. We are one of 100 billion stars in a vast galaxy, but for all of human culture on Earth, one sun that nourishes us all. That is what stirs humankind. That's what unites us. Experience the wonder, the beauty, and the power of our star. One sun across space, time, and culture. Let us continue the quest to unfold this universe. And let us continue to find unity in our discovery.